Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shalom. God is good. God is so good. I thank God for another day. Yes. Uh, he has been so good to us. He continues to um, amaze me at the things that he does and how he does it. I don't try to figure it out anymore. You know, when you, you God starts doing a lot of things, you try to figure, man, how did he, oh, he do that? You know, why did he do that? You know, and I don't, I don't even try that anymore. It's all about no. believing, walking in faith, and trusting God for all the things he has mm. done and all the things he's going to do. God is good. This is um, Happy Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. Wonderful time. And see, we even got a little one. That's Mother's Day. That's, that's Mother's Day. That's that's Mother's that's Day. That's the we hired her for that. Amen. 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 So I, I, uh, I have a special a message for you mothers today. And uh, I pray that uh, you'll be blessed because of it. Um, so I started doing a little bit of research. And the, uh, the official Mother's Day holiday rose in 1908 as a result of the efforts of Anna Jarvis. She was the daughter of Anne Re Rebus Jarvis. Uh, following her mother's death in 2000, I'm sorry, in 1905, Anna uh, conceived of Mother's Day as a way of honoring the sacrifices mothers made for their children. And in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed a measure officially establishing the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. I found that really interesting. There's a lot more to it, you yeah. know, but I just, uh, I found it interesting that um, this was a woman who actually did not have any children of her own. She, she never been born any children, but she knew uh, the sacrifices that women uh, make and do uh, to bear children, to raise children, and to see that they are blessed. So I know that all across America, and even in some parts of the world, uh, people are gathering together and honoring mothers. Motherhood is one of the most cherished and, sac and uh, sacred institutions uh, that we have today, and it is one of the most underappreciated Amen. Days as well. I found it so interesting that we got greeting card companies and floors that are making millions of dollars uh, this time of the year, hope helping that fathers and husbands and children can express their feelings uh, for all the hard work and dedication that these women have done in order to help raise their children throughout the year. And I just, you know. I've been on Facebook. I saw a lot of posts yesterday. I posted one about my mother, Michelle, posted one about her mother and grandmother. You know, I had to post one about my baby. Because <laughs> uh, my wife is an awesome mother. Right. And uh, she's been uh, very instrumental in the success of our children becoming who and what they are today. So I give her so much. Uh, praise and honor. And I give all mothers praise and honor because it's a job. Yes, it is. And I'm sorry, but I always said if it was up to men, <laughs> the world would be a lonely place. <laughs> That's the truth. It would be a lonely place. So if you would, because I want to talk about, I want to talk about a mother. I want to talk about a wife. I want to talk about a woman. Because God has so blessed you all. And you hold such a wonderful place in God's heart that he wanted you to know how women are to be cherished, honored, viewed, and blessed. So turn with, with me, Will. Michelle even uh, stated in Proverbs 31. Verses 10 through 31. Oh. Mother's Day. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
A truly good wife is the most precious treasure a man can find. This is from the CEV version. Her husband depends on her and she never lets him down. She is good to him every day of her life and with her own hands she gladly makes clothes. She is like a sailing ship that brings food from across the sea. She gets up before daylight to prepare food for her family and her servants. She knows how to buy land and how to plant a vineyard. And she always works hard. She knows when to buy or sell. She stays busy until late at night. Now, if this don't describe mothers, I don't know what does. <laughs> she spends her own cloth and she helps the poor and needy. Her family has warm clothing, so she doesn't worry when it snows. She does her own sewing and everything she wears is beautiful. Her husband is a well-known and respected leader in the city. She makes clothes to sell to the shop owners she is strong and graceful, as well as cheerful above the, about the future. Her words are sensible. Her advice is thoughtful. She takes good care of her family and is never lazy. Her children <laughs> praise her with great pride. Her husband says, there are many good women, but you are the best. Amen. Charm can be deceiving and beauty fades away. But a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. Show her respect. Praise her in public for what she has done. Amen. 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 Proverbs 31, ladies. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, I, I tell you, uh, that's, a, that's a tall order. Yes, it is. It really is. And I'm, I'm going to say this, and it is so true. In order for this woman to become this Proverbs 31 woman, man, you got to be in Ephesians 5. Amen. It's up to us to help these women become this type of woman because that's hard work. And I cherish my wife for all the things that I know that she does. And she is blessed. And I call her blessed. Genesis 3 and 20. Adam. Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Eve was the mother of all living. That's an amazing thing to think about. See, God created Adam out of the earth. But he created Eve out of Adam. Right. Amen. He placed in Eve the same amount of genius that he had placed in Adam. Come on now. Uh, I want you to understand that. Yeah. See, he didn't create a dummy. Nope. He didn't create a subservient being. He created somebody who could walk beside Adam, help Adam do the things that God had commanded Adam to do. That's a wonderful thing. So, God has a special place for those women. Motherhood is a precious thing. Great sacrifice goes into motherhood. The body is sent through great series of changes and the hormones are sent in a frenzy and the metabolism is altered greatly. See, we don't understand any of that. <laughs> but you fathers, if you spent time with those mothers when they were going through this, mm -hmm. you may not have felt it physically, but look. <laughs> you have one I right understand, here. You, one right here. you definitely yeah. can relate to some of the more emotional changes yes. that yes, they sir. go through. Yes. According to some physicians, a woman is closer to death yes. when giving birth than any other time in her life. Amen. Amen. That is true. But yet to produce life is the ultimate gift. That's outside of the gift of the Holy Ghost. That God has bestowed upon the woman and it should be cherished and honored more than one day a year. Amen. 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 We ought not just take one day and shower praises upon our mothers. 
This should be something that is done continually, constantly. I love you. I care for you. I want to help you. I want to do for you. Don't just take one day. Proverbs 23 and 25 says, Let your father and your mother be glad. And let her who bore you rejoice. See, there's a reason for all of that. We were watching a, uh, a news story this morning. And I don't know if any of you all have seen it. If you, if you don't know, you can, you know, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Matter of fact, I have it, it's on uh, Facebook. I think it's one of the first places that I saw. I don't know who posted it, but I thought it was very wonderful about a woman in Gehenna. Went to Gehenna. Uh, high school, and her son yeah. took her to the prom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This son took his yeah. mother to the prom. Yeah. She bore him at 16 years old and raised him after she had been through a series of foster homes all of her life. And was homeless. And had been homeless. Mm. But she knew how to she take care of her son and raise him up to be a man who was going to be successful and blessed. And this is what he wanted to do for his mother. He did not think about taking some, some other girl or, you know, whatever. You know, I've seen some of these prom pictures. I don't know about y'all, but I've seen some of these prom pictures. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Right, right. But he took his mother because of the love he has for his mother. That mother can rejoice so greatly in the things she's done for her child mm -hmm. because she's going to grow up just like this word says and call her blessed yes amen yes that's a wonderful thing to be able to call your mother blessed so when we think about motherhood and the miracle of childbirth we have to look at the complexity of fertilization and gestation so we're going to go to school for a minute okay come on hope you don't mind once the male sperm is introduced to the female egg, a metamorphosis or life begins. That which was separate now becomes one unit. The cells and membranes begin to separate and form different parts of the body. The womb is the protective shell for the fetus. The amniotic fluid serves as a buffer or a shock absorber for the fetus so that the movement of the mother will not damage the fetus. The umbilical cord serves as the feeding tube for the fetus to give it nourishment, oxygen, and essential nutrients that the mother has to help the child build up its immune system. Now, for anybody that wants to say that life just happened, <laughs> I beg to differ because it took a God yeah. Yeah. to design yeah. on, this type of operation yeah. uh -huh. so that you and I can stand in this room today and give him praise. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. each and every one of us went through this very same process Amen. to be here. Yes. Come on now. Come on. So I don't care how you feel about your mama, you still need to give her some glory, glory. Yeah, and give is. her some praise. Right, man. Cause her body went through a lot of trauma to bring you into this world. Mm -hmm. And as I look at these little ones, just the rock and the ram, I'm loving it. Because this right here is God's glory. That's right. That's God's glory. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it took a mother to bring this here. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 states, Therefore, if anyone in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is like the fetus within the mother's womb. He is fed nurtured, protected, strengthened, loved, and his immune system is made strong. Amen. 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 Just like an infant or a fetus in a mother's womb, when we're in Christ, this is what he does for us. Jesus gives us everything we need to prepare us to go out into this world 
to be strong and courageous. Yes. Yes. Fight yes. the fight of faith. Mm. Walk upright and holy. Yes. And bless those who come into our sphere of influence. Yes. 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 Now comes delivery time. Much pain and suffering is experienced during this time. Like I said, it was up to us. Mm -hmm. I got a little cut on my finger, man. That bad boy hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lying. I'm up there to it. Man, that thing hurt. <laughs> I can't imagine. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> oh no. Much pain and suffering is experienced during this time. Great effort is needed, and when the child is delivered, and it takes its first breath of life outside of the mother on its own. There is great feeling of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. We were we were at the, my son's graduation party, and uh, I was reminded that uh, when my when my first set of twins were born, that my mother had come over to the house, and she was looking down in the uh, bassinet at him, and my my mother said, "They're breathing." Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. But just her whole amazement of seeing these little ones just taking their own breaths and breathing. You know, I know it's something that's it's, it's got to be awesome. Well, it is awesome because uh, I was, my, M Michelle and I, we were in the uh, delivery room with my daughter when uh, my Savannah, granddaughter Savannah was born. And Savannah was born. It's the first time I'd ever seen it. See, I, you know, I was I was one of them back in the day that the the, uh, the waiting room was supposed to be for the man, and that's where you was. So, of course, all that's changed nowadays. But back in the day, you know, I figured, you know, man, hospitals spend good money for that waiting room. That's where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> so I was. But to see my granddaughter born, oh, that just yes. Took my breath away. Awesome. When she took that first breath and she cried, and you heard that sound. You know she is she's free. She's on her own. That's right. She's now entered into a world that only God can help protect her from. We can do as much as we can, but the ultimate protector is God. Amen. The ultimate nourisher is God. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. So that's just that's just uh, Cool. Just thrilled me. Yes. But what an accomplishment. Now, some women are unable to carry fetuses determined to deliver the baby prematurely. These infants need special care. Mm -hmm. They're sometimes put on heart monitors or in incubators or on lung machines in order for the body to begin to work on its own. So I found in Romans 15th chapter. When then that are strong ought to bear the infirmity, infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We, I, need to, I need to read that again. Then that are strong. We then that are strong. Ought to bear the infirmities All right, I got of that. the weak and not to please ourselves. Come on. When I saw that, I'm like, you know, that now, if that's not a mother, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. Because a mother will do without in order for yes. that child to yes. have. Women that are breastfeeding. Yes. That's a job, because when that child wakes up, it ain't about here, you know, mm -hmm. daddy, get the bottle and give it to him. <laughs> that ain't happening. Uh. When that child is hungry, mama got to do her business. Mm -hmm. Right here, right now. What a wonderful thing that God has done for women to be able to do that. So woman will give up a lot of her time, a lot of herself. It's not about pleasing herself, but that those that are weak, they've got to be strong. That's right. That's even with us. Mm. We who are strong in the Lord must help those who are weak in the Lord. Like a mother who nurtures her young, she sees to it that they are fed, they are sheltered and clothed, until such time as they are able to do for themselves. That's what God is expecting us to do for yeah. those who cannot help themselves. Mm. And sometimes it's not always about what you do 
uh, uh, materialistically. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to give a word of encouragement. You have to do things because there are those who have no ability to take care of themselves. I always go back to the paraplegic mm -hmm. who could not do anything for himself. And it was his friends that took the roof off and lowered him to Jesus yeah. so that he could receive his healing. And that's why Jesus told the friends, because of your faith, mm -hmm. yeah. we who are strong, we got to help bear the infirmities of the weak. So God took me to the example of the mother bird. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. We saw them back from time to time. We see pictures like this, and we always remember our children when they was growing up. Because they looked like mother birds, like, like, like baby birds. They was always hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always hungry. I don't care. We had four boys. Uh -huh. So you know they was always hungry. Always. <laughs> we always had to feed them. Mm -hmm. Our grocery bill was astronomical. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Yes. I didn't think it was so much, but my daughters could throw that a little bit too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, so don't think that it was just all in. <laughs> but just like that, mother feeding her children. Those, those chicks are born, they don't have their feathers yet. Half of them can't even see. They're not able to fend for themselves. They can't fly. They are prey to any predator that wants to take them. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's that mother's responsibility to protect them, to feed them, to nourish them, just like God does us. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't do for ourselves. We think we're doing things all yeah. by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't say, oh, I pulled myself up on my own bootstraps. No, you didn't. Yeah, no. God put somebody in your life to help you achieve some of the things you've achieved. And he's also touched you so that you can have a healthy enough body to do some of the things you do and a clear enough mind to think how God wants you to think. Yes. You didn't do it. God's always done it. Once we gain strength in the Lord, we can say like Paul, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities. In reproaches. Oh, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto them, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, that's God. And whose weakness? Mm -hmm. It's our weakness. We're not always as strong as we think we are. We fall prey so many times to the attacks of the enemy. We fall prey because we're not strong enough to walk that walk of faith that we should. But when we understand and realize that it's his strength that's made perfect in our weakness. Yes, Lord God. Then we can relax a little bit more knowing that God's in control and he's taking care of all of it. Yes, Lord and again, once we have gained strength in the Lord, we can say like Paul, therefore I take pleasure right. in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am Amen. strong. Because I understand right. that through those infirmities, through all those things that happened to me, I still know who is in control of my life. Amen. And even when I can't roll out of my bed on my own, I still got the strength of God. To Amen. Know that he's going to take care of every Amen. one of my needs. He's going to see me through every situation and circumstance. And he's going to be the one that's always going to be there when I call on his name. So we all must be born again. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have all of us. Yep. I found this in John 3, verses 1 through 7, talking about the story of Nicodemus. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees called, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. And no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, Unless one is born of the water 
and born of spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel when I say to you, you must be born again. Each and every one of us have had to go through a whole new transformation to become made new now in Christ. And just like that whole process of the natural child being born, we've got to go through the water. That's right. We've got to go through the metamorphosis of life in God. Mm -hmm. and be born again Amen. Right. so that we can have a clear understanding of who our father really is Amen. Amen. I ask people from time to time do you believe in God and they'll tell me yes mm -hmm. so my next question is always perplexing to them because my next question is what do you believe oh, come on. and you'll be surprised at the answers that people will give because most of them can't tell you what they really believe. Mm. And a lot of that is because they have not really been introduced to their father. Right. They have not gone through the metamorphosis of life in Christ Come on. to know who and what God's spirit is. Yes, Amen. yes, yes, yes. That he dwells in you mm. and wants you to understand that the power and the authority that comes with that metamorphosis life mm. now will enable you to do great and mighty things in God. Yes, Lord. Mm. Walk right and holy before him. Does that mean you're going to make a mistake? Yeah, you're going to make a mistake. Oh, yeah. You're going to fall down. Mm -hmm. You're going to say things and do things that may not be Contrary to God's word. But guess what? Just like a mother who still forgives you when you have done something wrong, mm -hmm. God will do the same thing. I remember my brother. I, I tell the story from time to time. My brother had done something wrong. I don't remember what he had done. But my mother made this cake. My mother was a was, 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 She loved to bake it all. She made this cake. And Mark had done something. And she was really mad at him. And, uh, but, you know, like the youngest normally does, they forget about all that. Mama, can I have a piece of cake? No, you can't have no cake. About 10 minutes later, Mama, can I have a piece of cake? No, you can't have no cake. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching TV, but I'm still listening to this. Because I'm like, this is my baby brother. I know he's going to get away with this. Right. <laughs> about the third time, Mama, can I please have a piece of cake? Now, at the corner of my eye, I watch my mother pick up this knife, <laughs> slice the cake. As she's slicing the cake, she's still saying, no, you can't have no cake. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. <laughs> See, and guess what? He got that piece of cake. <laughs> and I was like, that just blew my mind. I'm like, man, how in the world did he get away with that? <laughs> told me I wasn't getting okay. I wasn't getting okay. Exactly. That wouldn't happen. But just like the forgiveness of a mother, God does the same for each and every one of you. When you do wrong, God still has grace and mercy upon your life to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of your unrighteousness. Yes. That is what a mother does. Mm. That is what yes. God will do. Yes. Yes. The disciples came to Jesus one day and asked him, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child over to him and said, this is Matthew 18 and 3, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I've been watching her just walk around and crawl around. And she's she's ready to go. She all over the place. And you know why she can do that? Because she feels comfortable. There it is. She has no fear. She's got a wonderment. She wants to explore. But she doesn't care what you think about her. Amen. All she knows is. I'm all right. right. That's right. right. Ain't nobody stopping me. Yeah. So I'm all, all, right. all right. See, that's what Jesus was talking about. You got to become like that. You got to have that same type of mentality and attitude that I don't care what nobody says. Yeah. My daddy got me. Yeah. And ain't nobody going to mess with 
me. That's right. That's right. The Bible says that my father has a cattle on a thousand hills. That means that whatever he got, I got. I got. Amen. Right. Amen. He'll take care of me no matter what. You want to be that converted soul to know that God has your back. You got to be like that. That's what he had said. Yeah. Jesus was telling them that if their lives had to become changed, they needed to be like newborn children, innocent of the world, fresh, clean, and dependent upon God for all things. That child, she don't, she has no idea mm -hmm. the money you got to spend for her clothes, for her food. She doesn't have a clue about putting a roof over her head. That's not her <laughs> mindset. <laughs> All she knows is when I'm hungry, mama gonna feed me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I need my diaper changed, there gonna be a clean, fresh diaper <laughs> to put on me. <laughs> and when I wanna go outside, somebody gonna open up this door and let me out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how God wants you to act. We all don't need to be like children and let God be God in our Amen. lives. Amen. Any woman can give birth, but it takes love and dedication to be a mother. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. It really does. Yes. Amen. Love and dedication to be a mother. A mother. Amen. Amen. So on today, yes. may every woman, mother, Mother indeed, that's those women that don't have any children, but they sure got a whole bunch of children around them that call her mom or whatever. Right. Grandmother, goddaughter, aunt, sister, niece, daughter, granddaughter, and godmother. Have a wonderful, happy, and blessed Mother's Day. Amen. 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 Amen.